Hey guys, it's Dave, and today we are doing some more chores, all Hoya chores. Sorry, Aeroid fans, but that is what's on my list. I get a lot of questions about propagating Hoya, and even though I keep promising that I'm working on a complete Hoya guide, I am, I thought why not just work through some of this. I've got some pretty cool plants to show too, so in editing, I will have hopefully cut out, hopefully. <laughs> I will have cut out what I find boring. I don't know what you'll find boring or not. Um, but I think I will start with a plant I hadn't exactly anticipated on chopping. I wanted to, it was putting out some new growth. The growth is funky. Could it be because it got underwatered? Could it be because it was growing above the grow light in the tent? Let's not play the blame game. That all sounds like it would be my fault. Let's just say that Noel's newest leaf is coming out funky and it's not because of pests. We're gonna leave it at that. It just happened. So, victim number one, Hoya Noel. On a plant like this, this deformed leaf will be at the base of a new plant, and that is fine. Leaves come and go. I'm gonna cut this down as close to this next set of leaves as I can. And we'll get back to these in a second, okay? I promise. And y'all know I have thoughts on what I've read online. You know I do. And let's see here. Get that clipped. The question is, how much do I want to take? Usually, if I bother to start cutting, it's hard to stop a little bit. <laughs> but I want to leave myself. This is my personal plant. I, this, I had no intention of making this a you know mother plant. Uh, so I think we will leave her here. And I may even, in fact, I will repot this one. I think I went through a phase last year where I was potting everything way, way too chunky. And I don't know why. I wasn't having trouble with, you know, in air quotes, overwatering or anything. Um, I am much more likely to have dry rot than, than overwatered plant root rot wet rot it, it is starting off just fine this is exactly how it's supposed to start off anyway hoya noel i recently recently i've read many times online recently that you need to submerge the node of a hoya to get it to root because the stem cell material is in the node uh, to get it to root and even somebody kind of prominent had a just a brain fart clearly knows better than that categorically false no truth to that at all it's one of the beauties of Hoya that I'm gonna grab something real quick this was a Jennifer I put in here about a week ago and as you can see she's rooting quite well from the stem and she's ready to be potted up that's it that's all that's required those roots have been activated and it's ready to go into my normal substrate there are two main ways that I do propagations and for this you know a big heavy leaf like this and a Big, strong stem like this it's going to go into my aeroid mix this stem is very very unlikely to dehydrate and die and these leaves can keep themselves going for a, a very long time which is why it's easy to miss dry rot because leaves like this will look good for a long time and by the time they get soft or wrinkly you have no root system left but please do keep doing the taco test and waiting for your leaves to wrinkle before you water. I said I was going to get off that hobby horse in just the last video. 
It's two days later. <laughs> I can't help myself. I cannot help myself. So this is a little long probably. I'm going to give myself about three fingers and I'm going to move my fingers because these are sharp ass scissors. And I know that from experience. That's perfect and that's just about perfect. And I have, okay, I'm going to do just one of these Dixie cups with some holes in the bottom. I'm going to do a little fluval stratum at the bottom for weight. And then I'm going to do, this is all off camera, I realize I need to move my, my cool seedlings. If you're new here, this is just Cocoa Choir, Cocoa Chip, and number three, Perlite. And I am quite specific on what I will use, and that is linked in my description, uh, my Amazon links. So I will fill this up all the way. This is a little pre-moistened. It's a little pre-moistened with MSU fertilizer, not, not very much. I will put it in here. And that's it. When I water this in, it will be quite firm. I may use a plant clip once it's been watered in. Um, they don't really stick in until you've kind of watered it in. So I'll put it there in anticipation. Let me just pot up the rest of these and then we'll move on to another plant. I'm gonna back up one step, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm always this discombobulated, I can't help it. I use this uh, not because I think this, at least not this brand of, of rooting powder actually does anything. I've done some A-B testing, no difference at all in my experience for this particular brand, which was the cheapest thing they had on Amazon, but it will cauterize that fresh cut. And quite honestly, I have, you may have seen my uh, sunrise video where I just chopped a whole bunch of them, put them in directly into perlite and filled them up with water. I'm gonna do an update on those, no problem at all. I, I really haven't had many uh, rotting issues, stem rotting issues from the way I do it. The only thing that's really important in growing house plants successfully is what works for you. If it doesn't work for you, it really doesn't matter who has success with it. I don't care what their name or pedigree is. And uh, man, when I came to that realization at some point, that's really a game changer. <laughs> I guess. I guess the lesson was to trust myself, trust my own experience, which I, sh I sure do now. But I'm always open to learning as well. All right. And there's one. So Hoya Noel, check her off my mental list. Now let's do a different style. Let's grab a, I'm just trying to decide what would be easier to pull out of here. Not necessarily what it is. Let's see if I pulled one out that I can pronounce. No. <laughs> I'm not even sure. I'll put this on the screen. This whole tray are a bunch of seedlings that I bought from a friend a few days ago. And so we've got some pretty cool stuff in here. I am generally willing to take a chance on things like this. And as I was mentioning in my Matilde video, if you want a bargain on Hoya, get something off the beaten track, you know, something that not really a lot of people want. And you probably will be able to get it cheaper. I'm going to sanitize these. There we go. Um, I have a plant in the kitchen I'm going to show you that not too, too, too long ago, that plant would have set you back $600. 
600 bucks. I don't know what this is, but it is not hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> Everything's going just as I'd planned it. Should we try that again? <laughs> as I was saying, if you're looking for a bargain, don't pick the hottest in-demand limited availability plant out there. Um, that's just good common sense, but it's also good advice that I have followed pretty religiously. Uh, I'm just cutting this six inch aerial, aerial root off because I don't need, I don't need to look at that. And I'm going to excise some bottom leaves. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this. I, I am clearly not allergic to the milkweed family of plants, um, you may want to wear gloves. And the last public service announcement is don't forget to make tags when you're doing a whole bunch of propagation because I'm going to film some propagating and I'm going to do some propagating on my own. There's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot of propagating today. I just feel like I needed to take it easy and relax a little today. I did something over the last week or so, actually the week before last and into the weekend, I decided that even with long COVID, I would just try to push myself to have normal days and use up all my energy and oh my gosh, didn't go well, did not go well. Four. A stem this thin. Let me cover up. I'm going to put this into perlite. I have found it would probably be fine in the substrate that I usually use. There's a higher chance that it will fail though. There's a higher chance that this will wither and die. And again, by the time you notice it on the leaves, you can see how firm and wonderful these leaves are. Uh, it, it'll, the, the, it'll be all the way up to, if it's one node, it'll just be done. Now I'm doing two nodes on this one because I have a few of these and I want to have a nice little starter plant going. Um, but those are the really the only fails I have seen. So I'm going to grab a cup. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it without holes and not have a, not use it as like a cover pot. So this is that number three perlite. There's a little sphagnum moss in there from dumping it out of something else. So it, that has nothing to do with, with anything. I will plant clip this down. One of the, at this point, you know, I disagree with almost everything I read <laughs> on Facebook. Um, for some reason, it seems like a, a topic gets hot. And all I read about is don't fill this up with water. Keep very little water in it. It'll rot it completely out. What a weird thing to say <laughs> for something that will root just fine in pure water. I have never, ever had one rot. And I will fill this all the way up. And then this will begin to root very quickly in a propagation box or, you know, a sterilite box. And then I will let it just evaporate down. And when I refill, it, I'll keep less of it. It very quickly roots out. It very quickly builds in my experience, because a lot of you have good experience with water propagation. The roots will be stronger from this than the roots that I just did in water for me every time. And I do not water propagate anymore. These, by the way, uh, according to Doug at Vermont, Hoyas are very reluctant bloomers, but they have quite large leaves. Um, I'm good with that. I have a lot that bloom. I like the foliage as well. There are some Hoya I just would treat as a foliage plant. You know, anything, especially those that have blooms that last for overnight <laughs> or four or five days, um, unless it's blooming constantly, that's pretty short-lived. 
Um, now, obviously, some last a good deal longer than that. Um, but anyway, this is Hoya NR02. This is, a, let's see, an unknown Illusorium. Illusorium. No one has corrected me on how to pronounce that yet. Uh, hybrid. So that, this was some accident. This is a little bit different, so I'm going to make a cut and then we will talk about it. How many of these do I have? I, I bought a few of these, so I'm going to cut it there. I'm going to leave this to grow. So plenty of plant there. I'll put a little bamboo stake. Um, I will repot this uh, today. Why not? Here it is. I'll do that. Not with you. I don't want to bore you with more plant chores. This is kind of how I evaluate. We have an active growth tip and we have a node right here. Chances of this living through a chop are low. So I am just going to get rid of it. Small stakes. Small stakes to do that. And perfect. So there's one. little bitty baby leaves for this one with so little stem here between these two leaves it's going to be a great deal easier on me and you if you do it to cut one of those leaves off see if this one will fold up okay if you can pin it in this is questionable enough it has two nice leaves on it I'm gonna do it that way the stem on this one is a bit in between you know that Noel was quite quite woody the last one was quite green and flexible this one's pretty firm and stiff this one and the leaves are really quite thick this is gonna go into a substrate it's a simp that's how I decide it's really that simple I'll do the holes again. I'll do a little fluval and pot that up. And I would expect uh, some interesting plants coming out of these to be sure. I can still smell whatever I sprayed on my scissors earlier. What did I put in that hydrogen peroxide bottle? I honestly, I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea why my wife stays with me. <laughs> she probably doesn't either. <laughs> Habit. Here's an NR02. Oh, this is a really good example of, you know, the, the leaves getting longer. You know, here's a leaf that got, you know, kind of folded and, and broken, like you can see there. So when I'm buying, you know, seedlings like this, these have gotten, um, these are grown in a greenhouse, way more sun than uh, the, the amount of light they'll get here. These will get greener and greener. So they don't look great. You know, this is not something you would go to your local plant shop and think, wow, beautiful, amazing, etc. I know who grows these and I know that the root system in here is pristine. I know they're pest free as much as you could ever guarantee that. And I know that leaves come and go. So especially, you know, the lower ones, when those are ugly, I don't worry about that at all. Um, but I look for just overall health. Now, if this plant were kind of yellowed and everything was flimsy, <laughs> that's a bad sign. You don't want that. but. This is just a plant that's received uh, quite a lot of light. And again, a trusted source. Not everybody has that. I realize what a luxury that is for me. This is a weird, funky leaf. I'm going to cut that off. I usually start from the top. Um, I'm going to cut that leaf in half. It's just kind of hanging there. And I don't... Yeah, actually, I'm just going to cut it off. 
I don't worry too much about wasting leaves or maybe not getting every last propagation out of this vine. I want just the best leaves. Um, if it were something much, much more valuable, like the Noel to me, th that one, I would never waste a node. <laughs> On this one, it's okay. Don't go Conan the Barbarian trying to get your stem into the substrate. You will break it. I would imagine. I've never done it. <laughs> more than a few times. After a few times, I usually, I usually learn my lesson, except for drinking. That took thousands of times, <laughs> tens of thousands of times. <laughs> this one is kind of a hot house flower. So we'll see how this does. Also doesn't have a reputation for blooming easily. Likes it very warm and humid. Uh, per Doug Chamberlain and he would know that's been his experience for this one you know I uh, I could propagate this but I think what I will do is just repot it it has an active little growth tip there that's trying to do something I'm gonna leave it alone let's get a couple of cool plants here and how about the first of those being the silver dollar this is hoya mb1405a and it is pretty close to my mother grow light right now i'm going to pull it back so that it can take on just that silver sheen there's no veination in these really and so it looks kind of like a piece of sheet metal. This is the plant that I mentioned earlier that was $600 for a node. So this is two nodes, four leaves, active vine, although this, yeah, and it still has an active growth tip. So this would be an even more valuable plant than that. I won't even tell you what I paid for it. Pocket change, pocket change. So, a wonderful plant. I never got into the insane silver craze. I have no fear of missing out on anything. I'm not missing out. <laughs> you are not missing out on anything plant-wise. It will only get cheaper, never more expensive. Unless we have another lockdown. Then all hell is gonna break loose again and, and this will be I'll be able to pay off my mortgage with this one plant. <laughs> I have, let's see, this one is going to get a chop. And this is the Hoya Rajang Labong. I don't know why I'm showing you the tags because I'm gonna put it on the screen. Because for the first four videos I did, I, I did not know how to add text when I was editing. I didn't wanna let sucking at this stand in the way of me actually starting. There is no way to get good at anything without practicing. And that's plants, that's life, and it certainly is YouTube. <laughs> so this one I am just going to cut way down to the base, put it in at a slight angle, that'll catch the sun just fine. I could probably even do a little, little bit more, top it off a bit. Now, in a case like this, sure, the, the node is going to be below the soil line, but I didn't do that on purpose. That's just how these sit. So I'm going to move these. And then a big leaf mama. This is the MT09. These leaves get huge. These are very light green because, again, they've received an absolute ton of light, but this will be pulled back a bit from the light and they will get dark. Now, what we are looking at here is a really nice base plant, these three leaves, and then we start stretching out. Now, some Hoya do this naturally, no matter how much light they get, they will put quite a bit of distance as they go on their travels. But I, since I want more plants, I'm gonna cut this back 
I'm going to sanitize real quick. And then we will leave this alone. I'm going to clean up my mess after this. And that's a pretty good length right there. Do three fingers and that's looking good. So the question for me when I'm doing this kind of thing is we have excellent stem, very healthy. There's a node here, there's a node here, there's a node here, there's a growth tip. Will this live? It it might, but it's been my experience that oftentimes making that cut really activates the growth more quickly. And the most dramatic example of that I've ever had was my original Jennifer. It really wasn't doing anything. And so I cut off a piece of that vine that led up to another leaf from the base plant and then well, many of you, probably most of you, have seen what happened from there. <laughs> so, um, and that's not a one-off. This is something I've seen over and over again. So, I'm happy to, uh, if we can recreate another Jennifer, whew, I, would, I would not hate that. <laughs> I should be so lucky. That probably will never happen again, but hey, hey, hey. Very woody stem going to go into the normal soil mix I use. And I'm simply using the weight of the leaf to help us out so it won't pop out. It's one thing I really, really hate about water propagation. And I'm sure you have a better technique than I have, but I no longer care. So you don't even have to worry about commenting on that. Comment something because y'all are funny. You are funny. <laughs> but don't comment on water propagation technique because I don't care. I do not care. You can't make me care. <laughs> What am I, 10 years old? You can't make me. <laughs> yeah, I kind of am 10 years old. <gasps> oh, Lord. If I had put my mind to it young, who, who would I be right now? Probably, probably this right here. <gasps> All right. Oh, that went. Oh, can't ask for better than that. Perfect. So let me clean up for a moment. I will be right back. My sunrise repot gone bad <laughs> has been my most watched video for the last uh, 10 or, or so. Um, and this is what I was talking about. In case you haven't followed the mini saga of this, I repotted a sunrise that was beginning to show stress signs in the lower leaves of being dehydrated and it simply wasn't getting rehydrated. And when I popped open the hood, the, it was just dry rot. And so I chopped up the entire plant and there's a large, there's a large plant. <laughs> and these are all of the propagations that I made or all of the chops I made of it. And then I've got three large containers. These are, must be six inch containers that I filled completely with perlite and filled completely with water and look at her now. She's been in the grow tent because that's frankly where there was room in terms of humidity. Uh, blooming, growing, totally, de or <laughs> totally dehydrated, was totally dehydrated, uh, totally hydrated and looking wonderful. And I will get a bunch of these potted up. Of course, the last uh, blooms fell off yesterday while I was watering in there, meaning I knocked them off, but they were ready to go. So anyway, looking just great. All our friends on Facebook saying you'll rot out your plant if you fill a perlite with water. Oh, where's my fainting couch? Where's my fainting couch? These look great. That sunrise really is a testament to the durability of that plant. I didn't lose a leaf from all of that chopping I did. Just imagine that. I cut up that whole plant, plopped it into that perlite and water, and didn't lose a single leaf. Um, pretty impressive. And 
there's a reason that is on my absolute must-buy list. As is this one. This is Hoya Hanahi. And uh, a very special plant in its own right. When people get hep to this, I will be ready. I don't think anyone has expressed interest in this yet when I have offered it. But y'all come around. You all are going to come around. So I'm going to at least start there. I think that's good. And this has been growing way ab <laughs> above a grow light too. And listen, I can't be on top of everything. It's just impossible. <laughs> I try. So it, it was growing a little funky and had super long vines looking for more light that it was never going to find and it was it was just goofy so I had trimmed those back I don't know a week or two ago something like that it could be a month I, <laughs> at this point um, I'll do something prettier with this uh, on my own time but I mean this is a, a this is a great plant it's a great plant with a, a wonderful backstory I handle my plants so much that, I mean, knock wood, I've never had a, a genuine pest outbreak. Um, I think that has to be part of why that I'm just kind of on top of my plants. I am going to run through another 50 or 60 or 70 cuts <laughs> without you. Uh, I think even your patience would be tried with that. But if you're newer to this, it's hard to go wrong. It really is. Hoya is about the easiest plant there is to propagate. If water propagation is what you prefer, do it. I would prefer to grow everything that can be done with high confidence in the soil I'm going to grow it in. And that's just that cocoa choir, cocoa chip, and number three perlite. And that's it so that's always my preference it's ready to go when I up pot it I don't there's I don't have to do anything I just move it into the the larger pot if it's that really thin stemmed Hoya that I think has a good chance to fail in this soil mix especially if you are going to be prone to letting that mix dry out in fact if you are prone to letting the mix dry out just don't use it <laughs> You have to keep it moist and even in a prop box things can dry out so at least the ones I use um, they don't have a perfect seal and I'm growing a bunch of Hoya from seed and I am watching those like a hawk because they need ventilation they need constant moisture but they can't be drowned either so um, that's a video of another topic that I've already made <laughs> hey you know what Find that thing that is special for you to do for yourself today. God knows in the United States of America, we need it. And then come see me again real soon in the next one, okay? Bye-bye.